Support this podcast via our Patreon and get more writerly goodness. Visit patreon.com slash nanocast to join up. Welcome to NaNoWriMo Every Month. My name is J. Daniel Sawyer. I'm the author of some 20 books, 34 short stories, and numerous articles and other things, and I am your guide on this journey to use NaNoWriMo to level up to professional output levels. Welcome to The Questions, Day 3. Today we have another question from Kane where he asks about uh, drama and melodrama. I talked about the formal categories of what each one means from a literary theory perspective. And I also got another question about this from Chris, so I'm going to go through both of them in the one episode. Chris asks whether melodrama means the same thing when someone says something is very melodramatic. Um, We're talking about the difference between the colloquial definition and the formal definition. What I laid out for you guys about the difference between drama and melodrama is the formal definition. What Chris is talking about is the colloquial definition. The colloquial definition of melodrama refers to an aesthetic style that is intensely emotional and perhaps a little over the top, probably intentionally. It's not quite as over the top as camp, but it's a little bit over the top. It's kind of operatic in its emotional expression. It really, really goes for it, and it's willing to sacrifice a little realism along the way to get that really, really big emotional finish. That's what audience members and critics mean when they talk about something being melodramatic. And that's usually a good thing for a lot of audiences. What I was talking about, the difference between drama and melodrama being whether or not the character changes and particularly changes roles, that's a formal academic definition. It's something to be aware of as a writer. It's not something that the audience really cares about in the same way. Now, when it comes to whether characters in modern drama really change, this was Kane's question. He said, The vast majority of writing advice that is given out is primarily for drama and how the protagonist must, must, must be changed by the end of the story. Increasingly, I feel as though this is not as true as those instructors would have you believe. Most of the books I read are filled with protagonists who, in fact, do not change. There's a few different things at play here. The first is that there's a reason I emphasized changed however minor when I was talking about drama versus melodrama, because particularly in a lot of genre fiction, the changes that the main character undergoes are minor, especially when you get into series characters, especially when you get into adventure genre. The changes that they go through are minor. They grow in their abilities. They have a slight change of perspective. They have a mellowing of prejudices. They have an increase of prejudices. They have a change in their moral outlook, they have a change in their relationship status, a change in their financial status. But these changes can be very, very minor. The thing that makes it drama rather than melodrama is that in the drama, when you get to the end of the story, the change in the character gives meaning to what came before. It makes the struggle the character went through worth it. Whereas with melodrama, the lack of change in the character is sort of reinforcing the order in the universe type of thing. You tend to see a lot more melodrama, for example, in mystery and adventure than you do in romance. Even though romance can get a lot more melodramatic, in the colloquial sense, in the formal sense, it's much more bound to having to be a drama because the entire life circumstances of the main characters change as a result of the story. Now, when you get into literary writing advice, and by that I mean writing advice that proceeds from literary theory and literary fiction sensibilities and philosophy, then you'll get the idea that the main character must be radically changed by the end of the book. And this can happen. This can happen in genre fic as well as in lit fic, and it can be really, really satisfying. But it's a lot less common in genre fic, and it's not necessary for the story to be a drama as opposed to a melodrama. And I also want to point out that I am not disparaging melodrama. I'm just pointing out that if what you're doing is drama, you want to make sure to touch on those points as you get to the end. And with a little practice, this becomes automatic. The only reason I brought it up at the end of the podcast was because one of the issues that early writers tend to have is trying to figure out how to 
end a story rather than just stopping writing when the events sort of peter out. Which is why the two episodes about uh, drama versus melodrama and finishing versus stopping are right next to each other and they refer to each other in episode because they're two parts of the same sort of um, thing. So the takeaway is, in most fiction, the character changes as a result of the story. Doesn't mean they change who they are. They just grow. They may grow a lot, they may grow a little bit, but they'll grow as a result of overcoming obstacles, as anyone does. It doesn't mean that if you write a story where the character didn't grow, that you haven't written a good story. You can have tremendously good comedy that way, and melodrama certainly does have a market and a place. It's just not the most popular form of fiction at this point in history. Though... Frankly, it is a lot more popular than it was 15, 20 years ago, so it might be coming back into style. It's hard to tell. So anyway, no category judgments, no disparaging of melodrama versus drama. It's just a, an attempt to help you understand the difference so that you can know what you're doing when you're dealing with the different forms. So those are today's questions. I'll come back tomorrow with another one, and you've got to send in more, or I won't have any more episodes. So uh, do send them in to feedback at jdsawyer.net, or leave a comment on the blog. And for now, I'll see you tomorrow. NaNoWriMo Every Month is written and presented by J. Daniel Sawyer and produced by Artistic Whispers Productions. Visit our website at nanorimoeverymonth.com and leave a tip in the tip jar to support this podcast. NaNoWriMo Every Month is copyright 2015 by J. Daniel Sawyer and Artistic Whispers Productions and released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License.